Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back once again for the very first time to the Farts and Corrupt Show, where today, as per usual, it's your host, Anjo, here with a quick little farming guide for you guys for Mega Man Legends. Not Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Zero One. And uh, yeah, just at the top of the video, real quick for you guys, a little TLDR. Um, this is essentially what you are going to need uh, in order to do the Jackson run, essentially. If you guys are here, I assume you already know what that is. So what you need is 14,300, by my quick napkin math, uh, 14,300 E-Crystals to raise every Cyber Elf besides Jackson with a little stipulation because you need 250 extra to actually donate to the guy that's blocking one of them. So if you're farming right at the beginning of the game, essentially you need 14,550. Once you have Jackson, you need 4,500 more. So the actual total for everything is 19,050. Now, you can pretty much farm this uh, at the beginning of the game, although I would suggest doing the first couple missions before you worry about farming. However, um, there it has to be done somewhat early if you want to do this method. So, because where we're going to go goes through a little bit of a change if you proceed too far. And by too far, I mean if you do the mission Retrieve Data, which can be done relatively early. However, before you do that, you can get the Fire Chip and the Electric Chip. The... I guess it doesn't say what the actual item is called. You can get both of those. So just make sure you haven't done Retrieve Data yet. And the guy that you need to donate to is on the bottom level, uh, just past Servo. So this is Servo's lab right here, it's this guy. So he'll just be sitting here at the beginning of the game once you get back to the resistance base and be like, man, I'm so hungry, I need 250 E-Crystals. Like, here you go, and then you can go back here, and there's a cyber elf in this room. So, that's the extra 250 that you need. Um, as you guys can see, I have 6,000 e crystals right now. I have done this method a little bit, and I've already raised uh, some of the more grindy elves that you can get in the first couple missions, such as Totten and uh, Winky, and a few others because even though you need close to 20,000 E-Crystals, you can only hold 9,999. So that's why I say, if you want to get all the E-Crystals before you lose access to this grinding method, yeah, just do the first couple missions, get some of those Cyber Elves that you have to raise, and uh, go ahead and fully raise them so you can spend, I believe it's about 8,000 that you can spend on these early ones, which is quite a bit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys where this is. Essentially, it's the first area, Underground Laboratory, uh, because there are these nests that spit out uh, seven, like, spider robots. I forget what their actual name is. Um, I'm sure it says on a wiki somewhere. But we're just gonna go right back up here. And again, as long as you haven't done, um, retrieve data, you should be able to come back here. And I would recommend having the triple slash already for some reason. Um... It does seem to be a little bit more effective. F 
for this particular method because there is some randomness involved. Um, but like most retro video, well, most video games in general, actually, it's not like true random. It's semi-random. So these are the nests I'm talking about. And wow, most of them dropped E crystals. Okay. Um, the positioning really matters. And these guys can either drop E crystals or health. So. Yeah, it's completely random, or sometimes they don't drop anything. I mean, yeah, it's either random or semi-random, but... So essentially the timing is, and the positioning, you want... You want the left wall, like the purple wall to the left, to slightly be on screen by like a few pixels right about there. And essentially, that's the timing that you want. So you let them hop. Like here. Let's, let's do this. Okay. One, two, and then while it's in midair, you do the triple slash. One, two. And there you go. Now you may notice after a little bit of grinding in the same spot uh, that they may start dropping less. And for some reason, it does seem like doing the triple slash makes them drop a little bit more consistently. I don't know why. I've tried, you know, doing the buster. I've tried doing charge slash. I tried quite a few different things. Wow, that was surprisingly good. But yeah, it's seven enemies in very quick succession and it keeps spitting them out. But if you find that one is like starting to pay out less, just destroy the nest, go to the other one, which is just to the left. And uh, if you want to get some one-ups, these guys actually can drop them. And this nest is pretty much the same thing, although the positioning is a little bit different. Essentially, this is the position you want. So you want the nest to just barely be completely on screen. And then you kind of wait for the same timing. Like they do like the first one. If you watch the first spider robot, like wait for the second jump, then do the triple slash. If you're like a little bit further off screen like this, some of them will be like, yeah, they'll start to do that where they're disinterested. They don't like notice you. Senpai. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then it kind of throws off the rhythm. So you just want it barely fully on screen. Wait for that second jump and then triple slash. And before I realized this was the method, like, it did take me, like, four hours of grinding and, like, experimenting to get to where I'm at right now, which is, like, the crystals I have plus, like, I said, about 8,000. Um, but yeah, as far as consistency goes, like, I don't think this one is paying out as much. No, it's not. Okay, so we'll go back to the other one. And you kind of just keep repeating this process. Um, like Mega Man Zero has pretty, um, pretty NES style respawn rules, like for most enemies and stuff, as long as they're off screen, they'll respawn like, I could just destroy that nest, go over here, and then it's back. You know and that was actually pretty good so yeah the left wall barely on screen second jump two Ugh, that was terrible and yes a charge slash can take out all of them simultaneously it just doesn't seem to be as consistent 
as the triple slash. So. Oops. That was a little bit late. And yeah, I don't know why this helps. It just seems to. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to be paying out as much. Ah, that was pretty good. And... Oh, that was not bad at all. So we're already at, yeah, 67, 67, so... I've done some averages and kind of like various counts and stuff. Um, it seems like it averages between 110 to 200. Again, there's quite a bit of randomness involved. Um, it's like E crystals per minute. So, you know, just times that by 60 and that's like per hour. So, uh, on the low end, yeah, that'd be like, yeah, 100 to 200, so like, what, 6,000 to like 12,000 per hour? 12,000 seems high, like, probably between 7 and 10,000. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the whole process. Again, you kind of just need to do this before the Retrieve Data mission is done. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little guide. Hope it helped. Um, let me know in the comments, all that good stuff. Very much appreciate you guys being here. And speaking of things we very much appreciate here on the channel, a very special thank you going out to our current Farts and Crap Show members, the amazing people who make it happen, Navalis Traconis and Aaron Schick. Thank you so much for choosing to support the show a bit more directly via channel membership. Vastly helps out. Very much appreciate it. And uh, if you guys want to be incredibly awesome like them and get in on all those membership benefits, check out that join button down below. Your start three dollars a month. It's only ten cents a day. Ten cents a day gets you into all the basic stuff, including getting to vote on the series that get made here on the channel via the members' choice polls. All of the current series and most of the previous ones uh, were chosen by channel members, and um, including Mega Man Zero. So yeah, the members' choice polls—it's a thing we do once a month for a full seven days. So. 25% of the time we do have one active and um, to new channel members any of the previous members choice polls they may have missed uh, you can still vote on those over on the membership tab here on the channel um, basically the polls stay open until you vote on them and so even if you're just a member for a month uh, you can still influence the content that gets made here for a while because retroactive input on polls is considered for future polls. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, if that sounds like something you want to get into, uh, check out that join button. There's also a link in the description talking about becoming a channel member in case, for whatever reason, you don't see a join button next to the subscribe. Uh, but yeah, we got new videos every day, usually streams on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. This is an approximation, however, of future announcements from the past. So if you guys want all the announcements as they happen and the bell doesn't work for you, totally get it. The bell doesn't work for me either. Um, but there's three other ways you guys can stay up to date. The community tab here on the channel, the Farts and Crap Show Twitter, or the Discord. I always post on all three whenever there's an announcement. So regardless of which one of those works for you, you can stay up to date. And uh, links for those are down in the description, also in the channel banner. That's going to do it for now. So thank you once again for being here, guys. Till next time, take care, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.